Welcome. I hope you enjoyed the Biennale so far. And I welcome you at our presentation and our keynote. We were really looking forward to this keynote. I'm personally really proud of that I'm in the position to present you an incredible tool today. Let's start. The Biennale is about five powers. The corporate cities, the informal cities, hidden capital, and the spectacle cities. We decided to work on spectacle cities. Tourism. Tourism might go hand in hand with preservation. This is about heritage today. Heritage is part of everyone's life, and it's always too good to do things we are close to. So what's the current situation on heritage? This is the market leader, the UNESCO World Heritage. It works basically with the board of 21 members, a committee which is representing the member states of the UNESCO and which has the power to decide which site is heritage. From the first request to the response of this committee, it takes two years of negotiations. So, a long way of communication. And it's really complex, believe me. So, state body, UNESCO, then advisory bodies, back, forth, back, forth. That's the market, the world. And these are all the sites which are currently on the list of the UNESCO World Heritage. Of course, the UNESCO has also this kind of quality standards where everybody has to meet. And so there's also a list of sites we are, which are not meeting this standard, the so-called red list. So this is their global tool, is this listing. On the local scale, let's just use a standard plan. This is a plan of Innsbruck from 2004, a current plan. That's the proposed core zone and the proposed buffer zone. So in the end, it's a very simple tool of building up a hierarchy of heritage, of preservation. So the core and the buffer zone, that means there's something in between. And if you're in the outskirts, it's not relevant at all. It's not heritage. And these two tools are really powerful tools. For example, at this project in Graz, the investor was forced by the UNESCO committee to reduce the volume to 30%. So they had to reduce the volume just according to the UNESCO. That's another extreme example in Vienna, Austria, where the investor was forced to reduce the height of this proposed project of 50% and finally killed, the UNESCO finally killed this project and the investor went out of the city into the outskirts. But there are some problematic issues. The UNESCO has with the simple tools, listing and plan, incredible power. But we see some problematic issues there. That's, for example, the plan. Plan is a very simple two-dimensional system which don't allow you a lot of differentiation. And it's always in the past. It's always a plan. It's always showing something which already exists. It's not present at all. So that means static. The plan is from 2004, 
from Innsbruck, and it's the current one. So it's not reacting on the needs of a city, which should be dynamic. Blurriness. Of course, the buffer zone is blurry, but you don't know if it's 40%, 50%, if the comedy is fine with it or not. So, and there's always a delay. You have to ask, respond, request, and so on. And it's also the same issue like with the plan. It's about the past. Heritage is about the past, 50 years ago. It's not about the present condition in the city. And it's just slow. It takes the time. So, what we are presenting you today will be named It Heritage. Like It Girl, It Clothes, It Trousers, It Bag, you know, It Heritage. Just simple. It Heritage. So, what do we want? We want to have the plan more dimensional, with more layers of relevance, much more complex, and want to introduce a hierarchy into this, into this system. We want to have a dynamic plan, which goes with the needs of a city, and with the needs of us, of we, the in the inhabitants of the city. Pluriness. Of course, we want to have it very precise that we really can handle things. So we find a tool, or we found a tool and invented it, which deals with all these problems. To keep it very clear, we have a diagram, timeline, and revolutionary line. The plan was introduced 470 before Christ by Hippodamus. So at that time, really revolutionary, the first time a plan was introduced. But it's an old system, as you can see. That's the plan. Looks like an ordinary plan from the day. Everybody of us is using it, actually. So we have the plan. And another instrument, which is really incredible, was introduced in 1953 by Leo Kurtz, a revolutionary and incredible tool. It changes the, completely the way how people looked at hierarchies, at order systems, and systems which show the relevance of elements. To explain it to you, we just made this chart of a field. And the uh, question is, which element is the most relevant on this chart, on this field? So there's choosers and chosen. A votes for F, B votes for F, F votes for A, if you just count them together and you find out, okay, F is the most relevant element, D is second, and so on. So that's the common, conventional way how to rank a field. Leo Katz introduced a very simple idea to this. You don't have to count the votes, you also have to count who is voting. You have to look at the choosers. And if you make this new status index by Leo Katz and implement it into this chart, you find out that A is the most relevant element and not F, which would be obvious, but just very simple. F is voting for A, so it seems to that A has to be more relevant than F. So in this tool, this very simple idea, completely flipped the ranking at that time. 
So we are using it every day, maybe already today. Everybody of us is using it 100 times a day. It's Google. They're just using LeoCuts 2, which was introduced 50 years ago, but anyway. Uh, they are using it, and that's why they are that successful. Because the hierarchy is really representing the notion what you're looking for. That's why they are successful. So this idea is really strong. So we have the plan and the status index. We want to be with its heritage at the top. Its heritage will combine the new status index by Leo Cut and the plan and will create an incredible, powerful tool. And another issue, another issue is this delay and slowliness. So, how can we create a tool which is constantly online, which is constantly on time, like a city, like, like we are, like mankind? We don't live in the past. Heritage is also contemporary. So, we want to have it real time. And we want to have it fast. There's a simple tool everybody or some of you might already use in their blogs, in their personal blogs, the RSS feed. So in this tool, you have constantly all the news from, uh, from newspapers, from magazines, from your favorite band, whatever, on your blog. Immediately after publishing, they are on your blog. So this is a feed which brings a database in real time into a tool, and we are using it. How does it look? So the combination of Leocuts and Hippodamus and the RSS feed are its heritage. And that's how it looks. Like an ordinary explorer. On the left side, you have the feed. On the right side, there's the visualization of it. And just start. We open up Innsbruck. For this example, as you've seen before. And these are all the buildings listed of Innsbruck in alphabetic order. A, B, C. All the buildings. So we now open the library of our RSS feed and have, you have, can have age, architect, density, whatever you can imagine. You can just feed it and switch it on. Suddenly, according to the plan and Leo Cuts, this list is completely ranked in another system. And this shows in real time which is the most relevant building in Innsbruck right now. Right now it's Herzog Friedrichstraße 15, Maria Theresienstraße 35, and so on. So this shows the relevance of buildings right now in Innsbruck. And now I'm coming to the most incredible moment of this keynote. If we swap back to the standard element or instrument plan, we were really surprised the first time we have seen this. It looks different. It's completely different than the UNESCO core and buffer zone. Relevance is completely not topographically at all. Or maybe there's heritage in the outskirts somewhere. So this is completely reorganizing our standards so far. It's a tool which is combining the topographical elements of the plan with the new status index of Leo Cuts with the relevance. 
and came up with a totally different instrument, deeper and real time. So we as architects, or you especially, you can feed this tool and we together can create a tremendous, fantastic and incredible revolutionary new culture of heritage. Thank you. <laughs>